So my talk is about ACL injuries in professional football, and I'm, I'm quite grateful for Holly's overview uh, earlier this afternoon, uh, showing uh, the work from, from different research groups. And I will uh, focus, uh, focus on uh, our own research. Uh, to, to the bottom left, you have my details uh, for Twitter and LinkedIn and ResearchGate if you're interested, and uh, of course you can contact me. Uh, first of all, I would like to congratulate you, Mario and team, for arranging this terrific Congress online. And uh, also, of course, a big thank you for the invitation. Uh, unfortunately, there is no mandatory Congress photo this time. Uh, this uh, picture is from, from uh, Monaco a few years ago, but uh, we get uh, new chances uh, in the future, I think. Uh, lately, I, I was glad to hear Nikki's talk because I have been the team physician for, for yeah, the Sweden's best handball team for, for the past nine years. But uh, basically, my passion is for football. I've been the team physician for, for a few football teams uh, earlier in my career. And um, uh, what's important uh, for today's talk is that I'm a, a researcher in the so-called football research group uh, in Linköping, Sweden. The flagship of our research in FRG is of course the elite club injury study, formerly known as the UEFA Champions League study. This was initiated uh, by Jan Ekstrand and is actually still led by Jan Ekstrand. Uh, we have many European countries involved, many clubs included. Uh, in our big, big database, there are uh, many, many hours of exposure and we have many, many uh, injuries as well stored. Starting small in Sweden, we have uh, developed and now we have also international members in our research group. This is kind of the core, but we have uh, further names also as advisors and, and uh, associates. Uh, we are studying professional football exclusively. So at this level, a typical team can face around 50 or, or slightly more than 50 time loss injuries each season. We know of course that this varies intra-team and inter-team between seasons, but roughly a uh, particular player can, can face around two injuries per season on average. Of course, there are some players with zero or one injury, and there are other players with three or four injuries, etc. But the interesting thing from our statistics is that the match availability percentage is 86%. That, means that 14% of the squad at any given point in time is unavailable for the coach. And we know from previous research that this is really a high risk occupation being a professional footballer and, and the injury risk, work related injury risk is much higher than other traditional high risk occupations such as mining and, and construction, etc. So if you compare that to my common workplace, I work at the Department of Orthopedics in, in, in a small city called Hesleholm, but we are quite a large uh, orthopedic department with 45 doctors employed. But if 14% are absent each day because of work-related problems, that would be six doctors away from work. And, uh, and I guess if this would have been the case, the Swedish authorities would almost certainly knock on the door quite immediately. But this is the everyday situation for the coaches, uh, players and other staff in professional football. So I will sh uh, start by, by uh, showing some figures from this article published a couple of years ago in the British Journal of Sports Medicine. It's open access. It's about uh, uh, the ACL injuries in, in uh, our cohort of male professional players in the elite club injury study. At that time, we had uh, 140 total ACL tears. Two of them were treated without surgery, but the vast majority had uh, reconstructive surgery. 
slightly more patella tendon grafts and hamstring outer grafts. There were uh, a few other alternatives, not so much, not so many allografts uh, as perhaps in the US and, and uh, in some other countries uh, in this sample. It was quite consistent. You can see that the time to return to training was almost the same if you use uh, mean or median, it doesn't matter. So the data was normally distributed, but as you can see, the range was quite big. So it means that it's almost 6.5, maybe seven months on the sidelines until the first full training. And there is also uh, another month on the sidelines before the first match play. So almost eight months out from competition. And we weren't able to show any difference in, in layoff times between the patella tendon and hamstring tendon injury, the tendon uh, grafts. However, as Holly also mentioned when she cited our study, we uh, recorded seven retears uh, within the first year after ACL uh, reconstruction. Two of them actually occurred before clearance to return to training. And maybe this is the price you need to pay if you, if you try, are trying to push the rehab times and, and also if you introduce some uh, knee demanding sport specific um, on-field rehabilitation. Uh, one retire actually occurred six minutes into the very first match after return to play and there were four, four other early uh, re-injuries. So all in all, this was 7% um, uh, of retires within the first year after ACL reconstruction. And we have continued to collect data. Uh, now we have more than 200 ACL injuries in the database. And we can see that there are very few career-ending injuries. We only have four of them, two direct, and they quit direct after the diagnosis, but we have two indirect ones. They were able to return to training, but there were no match play uh, before they uh, ended their careers. We have data on 194 players, that is uh, another 54 players since the publication, and we can see that we have added another six retiers here. Uh, one more uh, before return to play and five after return to training, but still the re-rupture frequency is 7% in this sample. There aren't very much literature to compare with. Uh, of course, there are patient series and there are RCTs on ACL reconstruction, but, but um, the only, only study that I think is, is uh, fair to compare with is uh, Andy Williams series. He published this um, uh, in a review article and he uh, had 10% of re-ruptures with a minimum follow-up of two years, up to 12 years in his material. So I leave it to you to decide on if you think that 7% or 10% is, is uh, high, acceptable or, or, or low. But I think that we all can agree that early re-injuries, no matter if it's a tendinopathy, if it's an ACL injury, hamstring strain or, or ankle sprain, is a medical failure. And historically, they have been attributed to premature uh, return to play. Of course, sometimes it's a deliberate and even shared high risk decision uh, from, from the team and the player. But often there is also a lack of valid RTP criteria or tests. And there is a big variability between different clinics, clubs, etc. And also there, there must be some kind of fingertip sensation in these decisions. So seven or 10%, is that the price you need to pay at this level? Or as many speakers have been on to, uh, is, it, is, it, is there a place for a better safe than quick algorithm even at this very highest professional level? So let's dig into, dig into the, the stats of, of the publication from uh, 2016 a little bit deeper. We can see that the average time here to return to training is almost seven months. 
one third of the players they return to training before six months and almost all of them 93 percent they return to training before nine months which nowadays often have have been has been advocated as the minimum time uh, before uh, letting the players back on the pitch if we look at the return to match stats we can see that uh, the average here is almost eight months less than one uh, quarter of them had played the very first match before six months but around three quarters had played a match before nine months of rehab so let's move on to i would like to share um some thoughts that me and claire ardon had in in the aspetar sports medicine journal a couple of years ago and we don't need to talk very much about the first bullet point here shared decision making it has been mentioned by others and 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 uh, it's quite uncontroversial nowadays and it involves at least a player coach and the team clinician physio or, or doctor but but often also other stakeholders as well but the player also needs to be mentally ready to return not just physically and the interesting thing in the literature here is that these two components they usually do not coincide and to the the bottom right you can see a quite famous quote now from Slatan. I had some time uh, Mario to edit my pictures in the afternoon because I, I knew you were <laughs> you wanted to see your favorite player pictures on your favorite player and um, you might think that Slatan actually went back too early and then he was out of, uh, out from play again and then he came back uh, again and and uh, nothing can uh, no one can complain about his performance at the moment but the underlying factors for those early re-ruptures after return to play is is uh, quite unclear but it could be that you should avoid avoid some spikes in workload uh, because we know from from many many studies that the risk of suffering an acl injury is so much higher during match play than during training so it might be wise to have a quite long interval between the first training and the first match but as you could see this was just around three or four weeks in in our material and it might uh, some further weeks might be needed and as been pointed out by Hege and others also, that there might be a, a, a need for a minimum time. You cannot just stick to time-based uh, rehabilitation and you cannot just stick to criteria-based rehabilitation. You need to combine these two measures and we need to talk about the minimum time. And as I mentioned before, nine months has been, been advocated as, as the time, as an appropriate, appropriate time point. So let's go back a little bit uh, to an earlier study we published in case that uh, 2011. It's also based on the elite club injury uh, study ACL injuries, but we also added the Swedish uh, men's and women's Premier League data in this publication. And we can see that there were basically no difference between the three cohorts in the return to training times. It was uh, around 6.5 months in all three cohorts so. but if you look at the layoff to first match it was another month in the elite club injury study but in both swedish cohorts it was another month so there was a two month interval between the first training and first match and if this is good i don't know but but it seems attractive so I would like to take the opportunity to change focus a little bit to mention also a little bit on, on the female ACL injuries. Uh, the two highest leagues uh, in Sweden consists of 16 teams on the men's side and 12 teams on the women's side. And we have shown that there is on average 0.4 ACL injuries. That is almost one ACL injury per team every second season. So 
in the league there should be on average six to seven ACL injuries each, each season. And the corresponding figures for uh, the women are almost one ACL injury in a club each season. And there is eight to nine ACL injuries in, in the league uh, per season. But during 2012 and 2013, during an 18 month period here, we saw 28 ACL injuries in the Swedish women's first league. And this was uh, before the women's Euro in Sweden uh, 2013. And I didn't do as Nikki and, and Holly, I didn't put red circles around the faces, but uh, the apparent thing was here that many of the uh, ACL injury in, injured players during these um, two seasons were national team players and they actually missed the Euro because of the ACL injury. Previously, we had uh, mainly seen the ACL injuries among younger females. It was very rare with 25 plus, but um, this was also some kind of icebreaker here because many of them were actually 30 plus when they got their ACL injury. So this was um, uh, quite a big thing in media and, uh, and uh, among practitioners in Sweden. And luckily we, we saw fewer ACL injuries during the subsequent uh, seasons. But now this season 2020, the Corona season, we have a new epidemic in the pandemic. We have recorded 12 ACL injuries during the first six months of this season. And that is two ACL injuries per, per team and season. So it's a doubled rate. And interestingly, seven out of these 12 players, they had a previous ACL injury. And for two of the players, it was actually the third journey. So regardless if you study men's professional or elite football or women's professional or elite football, a previous ACL injury really seems to be the risk factor for a new ACL injury. And we really need some more data on the women's side. So uh, two years ago, we launched a women's elite club injury study in collaboration with the UEFA. We start or starting small as we did with the men's study uh, 20 years ago. But uh, Anna Halen, who is in charge of this study, has just started to do the analysis. And we can sell, say that um, we have quite interesting ACL data. So I, I um, hope that I can present them uh, within uh, half a year or so from now. So my main takeaways from, from this talk is that uh, the return to play success rate in professional players is very high. It's uh, 100% to training and slightly lower um, to, to match play. The average layoff is not nine months, it's between 6.5 and seven months uh, to the first training session and uh, another month to the very first match play. We have shown that uh, there is an uh, early re-rupture rate within the first year after ACL surgery of about uh, 7%. And a more long-term follow-up with new data has shown that as many as almost one-fifth of all players with index ACL injury, they face a second ACL injury after uh, five years or more. And finally, I do think that we, we really need some more data because if the re a rupture rate is 7% on the men's side and the second ACL injury rate is 18% on the men's side, it is very likely that these figures are higher on the women's side. So we need much uh, more data here. And I don't know if this Congress is, is going to be um, held online or, or, or actually be in Lyon. And it would be nice if we if it can be arranged in Lyon. So I, I hope to meet um, all of you uh, down there. So maybe we can have our photo there, Mario. Thank you very much for your attention.